The lighting in this portrait is just amazing. What's up guys, today we're gonna to be doing a study of one of my personal favorite paintings from the Baroque period, and it is painted by Johann Vermeer. It is known as Girl with a Pearl Earring. For some quick background, Johann Vermeer is a Dutch painter in the Baroque period, not to be confused with Broke. It's a period of painting that involved a lot of high realism as well as very high contrast and dramatic lighting in a lot of their uh, painting scenarios. So the portrait we're looking at today is actually a really well-known portrait. I think everybody in the art world has seen this at some point, everybody has heard of it at some point, and I'm really drawn to Vermeer's work, not just because of this piece, but because he also specialized in painting a lot of very ordinary scenes from the lives of the middle class, kind of finding beauty in the everyday in very ordinary scenarios and very ordinary people. And that's something that I think I really resonate with. So I'm going to do a study with you guys today of an old master from the 1600s and take a look at some of the uh, elements in this painting and, you know, talk you guys through this entire process and we can... Uh, you know, maybe learn a thing or two from our friend Johan Vermeer here. Anyways, that's enough of an intro, let's just go straight into this. So as we're taking a look at the reference photo and the portrait here, uh, you're gonna notice that the background is extremely dark, it's almost like a pitch black kind of color. And a lot of paintings during this Baroque period had this very high contrast thing going on and the lighting was always uh, spot on and super dramatic. So you know I love a good lighting scenario and I love a good portrait and uh, this is gonna be exciting. And just so you guys know, this is not going to be a one-for-one -one portrait. I will be putting my own stylistic spin on it, but I will be observing uh, the way Johan did certain things in this piece. And I also won't be using any reference photos on top of this. I'll just be referencing uh, the lighting and the colors in the original painting. So we're about 10 minutes into the sketch now and I think we're ready to go into colors and this is where we're gonna see a lot of the interesting choices that Vermeer made in his paintings and some of the things that he did in terms of the rendering and the coloring. We're gonna start off with uh, picking a color for the background. It's gonna be very, very dark. I take that back, that was actually too dark. The uh, multiply layer wasn't even showing up on top. So we're gonna actually just fill in this character first with the base color. You know, I know a lot of people say to never use pure black in paintings, but it really does look like pure black here in the background. So I'm going to start color blocking and I'm going to try to make this as realistic as possible, as close to the original as possible while maintaining my own personal style. And if I see anything interesting happening in the original painting, I'll point it out to you guys and uh, we'll just go from there. So as we move along in the color blocking stage, I think one of the most impressive things about this painting is the use of light. The portrait looks to be lit by this uh, very strong direct key light from this top down angle and it appears to be the only light source in this entire portrait. Except for maybe behind our character where you see a little bit of that blue start to shine through on the um, headwear of the character. That might be like a like an ambient light source coming from behind. But overall, it's a very key light heavy kind of portrait. It's very high contrast, it's very direct. Vermeer is very confident with the way he applied uh, the contrast onto this portrait. Whenever you're doing one of these studies, you want to make sure that it's somebody you admire in the first place. And you also want to make sure that you are studying the way that artist handles uh, things like coloring and lighting and the way they do like transitions from light to shadow, fabric and skin. A lot of things that you want to observe and try to learn as much as you can from uh, what you see in front of you. So I'm looking at the colors right now, on the, even just on the skin, and there's so much nuance. Like there's hints of green, hints of yellow, hints of blue. It must have taken a long time to complete this painting. And 
And as you look at the bottom area of the jaw here, you're gonna see a lighter tone uh, on the skin, and that's because of something called bounce light. In this case, the light source is coming from up top. It's hitting the white collar uh, that is being worn by our subject, and it's reflecting back up onto the lower side of the jaw. So that's why that part appears to be a little bit lighter than the rest of the shadow. Crazy attention to detail. And the combination of colors in the original portrait is just insane to me because I'm seeing tones of green, yellow, blue, uh, purple, red, everything mixed up in the skin tone. But then when you look at it from far away uh, without observing the details too much, they kind of all just blend together into this really uh, natural looking color for the skin. And that's something that I really admire a lot about the old masters is the way they use colors in areas where you wouldn't expect to see a certain color, like green on the skin. Like you're not painting Shrek, but it just works when they do it. The main thing that I think I really want to observe is the use of colors in, uh, in this portrait because I think it's really well done. I forgot to flip my canvas. Oh, not bad. Okay. Yeah, so the original portrait doesn't have eyebrows, uh, but I think we're gonna we're gonna try to add some eyebrows because I I. I I don't know, I like, I like to put eyebrows on my portraits. If you look like super closely, you can see very subtle hints of orange and red and really vibrant colors being mixed into the uh, the areas where the shadow is transitioning to the light and just adds so much life and i'm picking up on like hints of blue and green like these are colors that you know if i were painting on my own i would hardly ever go to for any part of like uh, the skin or the the uh, human body I'm seeing green in the shadow. It's insane. It's it's like the harder I look, the more colors I see. But at first glance, it looks so simple. I don't know how these guys do it. It's crazy. But yeah, we're about like 50 minutes in and there's still, I feel like there's still so much that we can look at and there's so much we could do, but I'm gonna try to keep the painting relatively short. I have no patience. But guys, if you're in a situation where you're having trouble, you know, understanding how colors work together with one another and where to put what kind of colors, studying some portraits done by these old masters is a great way to go about it. And really it doesn't matter what stage you're at, whether you're an advanced artist or an intermediate artist or a beginner, there's a lot that you can learn and absorb from the way these artists did their paintings. Notice how he even got the reflection of the white collar on the bottom side of that pearl. Like it's so shiny that it's capturing a direct reflection of what's underneath it. Okay, now let's do the clothing. I mean, it is like a brownish goldish kind of shirt, so you would assume the colors would all be within that range, but there's just like so many hints of blue and purple and green and all kinds of different colors on top of it. It's just like really interesting observing um, the choices that were made in the process of painting this. Honestly, this portrait has probably made me use a higher range of hues 
than any other painting I've done in the past year. This is hard. I think we're just about ready to finish this up. Um, it's been really fun. I'm just gonna add in some final touches and I'll check back in with you guys when it's done. Okay, you know what, if I don't stop it now, it's never gonna end. There's just so much detail for me to pick at. But uh, there it is, guys. This was a study of Girl with a Pearl Earring by Johan Vermeer. And I had so much fun doing this. I've been wanting to do this for a long time now. And actually diving into this portrait and analyzing the colors and uh, picking it apart and kind of like trying to replicate it in my own way has been so much fun. And I feel like throughout this process, I've learned so much about you know the use of colors and how flexible it is and i think if you guys are having trouble with like colors or anything like that studying one of these old master paintings uh is gonna really open your eyes to the possibility of using a whole bunch of different colors in scenarios that you uh, otherwise wouldn't even expect them to uh, appear in it almost seems counterintuitive to be putting green on skin but they do it and the characters don't look like Shrek. So, I mean, it's really impressive when you really dive into one of these. At first glance, it looks so simple, but there's so much actually happening behind the scenes. I mean, I hope you guys like seeing my take on this portrait. Hopefully this video was, you know, helpful to you in some way and it's been awesome. So there you go. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you want to see more digital art content just like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. But other than that, I'll see you guys on the next video. The lighting in this portrait is just amazing crazy. Who knew that there would be green? Who expects there to be green, blue, and red on skin? Like that's so counterintuitive, but it just works.